let's get started for today's class today we are going to solve the progressive insurance calculation assignment uh, but before starting uh, let's refresh our knowledge on a very important concept CAGR that is compound annual growth rate uh, this is nothing but often times uh, businesses uh, get involved in several multi-year projects or investment decisions or sales decisions and number of customer uh, increase or decrease decisions over the period of time so whenever that over a period of time especially like months or years are involved there is often uh, yeah, some kind of interest rate is involved or some kind of rate uh, growth rate decline rate and uh, all those in involved so that's when this uh, compounding comes into picture yeah again very important con uh, concept uh, it applies uh, to yeah like majority of the investment decisions uh, yeah uh, and oftentimes even you might be using it for your own personal like 401 case uh, mortgage rates and so on so let's get started here is a problem given uh, and again this problem comes from our textbook uh, used for business statistics 1 business statistics 2 uh, sanjeev jagia uh, yeah business ads uh, class so the problem says uh, starting uh, adidas sales uh, well again in the starting year was uh, 10000 k and after year 1 it grew at a rate of 51.96 and then at a rate of uh, like end of year 2 it was 2.13 uh, percentage uh, year 3 it was 4.85 and year 4 it was negative so there was a decline 3.87 percent uh, yeah percent so the question is uh, what is the average growth rate for uh, adidas during these four years uh, yeah so that's the question uh, well one way is we can just get state average of these four averages and that's your answer but often times uh, like i said uh, whenever like multi-year uh, rates are involved you always uh, pick compound because it uh, encompasses or it uh, incorporates the compound effect which is very important uh, as per the textbook there are two formulas one is this it says gg equals to uh, n minus one root of future value divided by initial start value minus one so in this case our start value is 10 percent so your x1 is start uh, yeah uh, that uh, 10k xn we have to find and we have the rate so based on that yeah we can definitely do definitely do the calculation and find it uh, second formula is uh, yeah gg equals to nth root n is your number of years so in this case uh, yeah it's like year 0 1 2 3 4 so total n is 5 so fifth root of 1 plus g1 that is uh, 1 plus uh, yeah 0.5196 multiplied by 1 plus g2 that is 1 plus uh, 0.0213 uh, yeah continue adding until the last one and then get the root of it, yeah, nth root of it minus one. That's your uh, compound annual growth rate. <coughs> so let's solve this problem. For that, uh, I'm going to formulate the problem, uh, yeah, uh, in a tabular format. And again, for you also, suppose uh, you graduate, you are working for a big firm, your boss and the team uh, comes up with these problems like these, or you formulate, you know, while some of your team discussion, brainstorming discussion, you formulate problems like these. Uh, so as an analyst or as a professional, it, this should be your habit is immediately try to formulate a, a table yeah using excel and again excel is our best friend uh, it says a very useful tool start formulating it and then it will lead you to the next step and uh, eventually the problem solution and so on so yeah i'm going to start this way so again uh, the first set of data is the starting uh, sales so again starting meaning there is some kind of year involved over here so i'm going to say year and first is one zero uh, starting then one two three and four is given Next one is the actual sales value given, right? Uh, so I'm going to say sales or yeah, uh, S-A-L-E-S. And this is going to be one zero 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 zero. Uh, yeah, later on, uh, we have the interest rates. So we, uh, sorry, the growth rates, we will be uh, for finding the actual sales for these years also based on that given information. The next is uh, growth rate. And uh, for this, it's none. So I'm going to say dash. Second one is year is 0.5196. Maybe I'll just copy paste this. Control C, Control V. Next one is Control C. Third one is Control C, Control V. The last one is Control C and Control V. Yeah, definitely there is a format uh, difference so maybe yeah let's i'm going to go over here format painter select all of these and paste it out awesome so all yeah the same format or same format other thing i am supposed to fix is uh, yeah later on i'm going to fill this i know these are dollars so i'm going to say this is dollar a decimal added as of now i don't want decimal so i'm going to delete those two 
this uh, looks like it's general so i'm going to go over here let's change it to number and uh, oops this took it as a character not a negative sign no problem let me right click here uh, go to format cells then for decimals i'm going to keep this and number awesome yeah this is done so yeah this is all number this is good this is oops, it's still saying custom well let me go to currency perfect and uh, oh yeah now i know what it is yeah so yeah now it's currency perfect this is resolved these are resolved let me uh, make this attractive always a good practice best practice make all the data table that you created to be present table this is a given so i'm going to highlight it with light green this is my given so i'm going to highlight this also with light right green and let's have everything centered sweet now let's go ahead and calculate the actual sales amount for year one year two year three year four again the formula is simple and uh, later on whenever you take your business stats one or business stats two or some kind of finance accounting classes this is what you will be learning so i'm just going to use that formula we are not going to go into much detail so equals to this value multiplied by now you see this one plus this value yeah so that's a growth rate so this is my uh, yeah growth multiple i'm getting then i'm going to drag this all the way oops la oops last thing is going give me an error because as i said before it's not identifying this as a number which is a problem let me try a few things say let's see number no this is also let's see it's also number well uh, yeah frankly this is a formatting uh, issue yeah, other way excel takes let me try the other way if i put everything is bracket uh, sometimes it takes it as a number awesome yeah so i'm going to make this also currency oh there are this you know decimals so let me add a couple decimals awesome yeah so this is what i got and this also let's add a couple uh, decimals so yeah we get the same excellent so this is our calculated value so these are the based on the growth rates given this is the starting point this is what we calculated uh, so yeah, per year uh, at the end of year one, these were the sales. End of year two, these were the sales. Uh, end of entry, these were the sales. And end of year four, these were the sales. So for the calculated, maybe let me use light orange. Now the question is, uh, yeah, what is the average growth rate? Well, one way is I can just get an average of these four. So I'm going to do that equals to A B E R A G E. Close it out. Select all these four. Close. Done. Awesome. So. Yeah, let's get a standard format. 14, let's add a couple of decimal and I'll center it, center it, use the same format painter, format painter, and let me name this as average or uh, yeah, standard average. Yeah, but again, I definitely know this is not my answer. We are just, uh, you know, I'm just trying to show this. Then uh, let's go ahead and do the actual calculation of the CAGR or the uh, geometric mean, also called a geometric mean. And for that, I'm, do, I'm going to do a small revision over here. So in a uh, few weeks ago, one of the lectures that I recorded for descriptive statistics, uh, this is the sheet that I had presented. And in fact, I'm pulling this again one more time uh, just to show you guys. Maybe let me track all the way right. And again, I will recommend all of you to use this as your, I will say, master file uh, display kind of thing. So just uh, print this picture on a uh, big sheet of paper, maybe colored. Yeah, colored is good. So yeah, eight, uh, yeah, like uh, 11 versus eight and a half and uh, post it in front of study desk or your office so that you can, uh, this is visible because uh, yeah, well, the bigger picture or a bigger answer is that in the world of data analysis, you know, you'll be often be uh, dealing with a lot of data and it's always a good thing to deal with a lot of data so that you can make data driven decisions. So suppose you're given some data sets, yeah, say maybe it has 10 data points or uh, 100 data points or 1000 or 100,000 data points, doesn't matter what the point data points are. Uh, these are the uh, summary measures you should be using and blindly yeah i mean if i don't know a lot about what i'm looking at if i just want to get a feel blindly with respect to central tendency so central tendency will give you where the center of that whole data is meaning what's the mean average and median mode and so on so that will give you an idea about where the center lies so yeah uh, if you don't have a know a lot straight away just get the average just like what we did over here luckily we had only four data sets imagine i have forty thousand. i will still get the average and i can get I can uh, know, you know, that my center of this data is somewhere over here. So with respect to tendency, I think that's the first thing that must come to your mind, which is average. 
Next one is standard deviation blindly. Yeah. So yeah, this just a re refresher. But again, uh, reiterating, uh, please go ahead and print this and uh, post it in front of your study desk because with respect to data analysis, this is something you will be needing a lot. Uh, yeah, if yeah, before going to much more detail. As you go, once you know what you are looking at, yeah, maybe you don't need any of these. But this is the most basic thing you must be knowing. So uh, yeah, these uh, central tendency. Variation and shape. Shape is something you will learn over a period of time as you become in senior and so on. Oftentimes, thanks to central limit theorem, uh, you can assume everything is normal distribution or bell-shaped curve if your data points or the sample size is more than 30. But yeah, there is something called a skewness, there is something called a skewness and so on. So you learn over a period of time. So again, final, final coming back, uh, look at the average uh, to see the central tendency, look at the standard deviation. In this case, ES are involved, so we are going to look at geometric mean also. So for that reason, uh, yeah, this is the formula. Again, there are a couple of formulas, textbook formulas given over here. And if you take uh, business stats one or two, this is the formulas you should be using. But yeah, uh, in the modern Excel world, I will say Excel is our basic literacy, uh, I will say tool. Uh, yeah, like the calculators are going away and this is what you will be using. So yeah. So for that, I'm going to type say CAGR over here, CAGR, so that we know that we are looking into it. Oops, too bad that, you know, all the formats are uh, yeah, going back and forth. So maybe I'll just use it all across. Oops, it's taking green also, which I might not need all. So I'm going to remove, no fill. Coming back, coming back. So let's do it. So the equation I'll be using to get the CAGR value is equals to my uh, future value. Yeah, so in this case, this is my future value. Well, let me start with a bracket. Later on, it will be helpful. So start with the bracket future value divided by my present value, meaning starting value, close the bracket, raise to start a bracket one divided by total n minus one. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, n is time period. So one, two, three, four, five, five time periods minus one gives me four. So closing it down. So this is my CAGR. And remember in this formula, you have to do this minus one. So the, whatever you did over here is this entire thing. Yeah, so nth root, so that's what we did, nth root of that. Now uh, you're doing minus one to get the actual CAGR, yeah? So uh, yeah, equals to, uh, I'm going to do this minus one, I'm getting my CAGR, yeah? So let me convert both of these into percentages. It's 12%, yeah, let's add a couple decimals. So yeah, the uh, average of all these growth rates is 13.77 versus my CAGR is 11.83. So yeah, this is my CAGR. This is my, uh, like, yeah, if I use this annual uh, thing, if I uh, also incorporate the compounding based on the year, uh, this is the actual answer I'll be using. So this is my CAGR. So yeah, let me highlight this CAGR. And I'll do, yeah, let's use the same thing. Yeah, so this is uh, yeah how you do it in Excel. Uh, next way is, you uh, well, if you are using Excel uh, 2017 and below, uh, and sorry, and beyond. So before, uh, yeah, th this is how you had to do, which is like actually input this formula, uh, this formula. But uh, Excel 2017 and later, uh, yeah. So there is another way where you can do the exact same thing. So here is a formula for it. It's called as RRI. Yeah, you just see what it is. So equal, yeah, it's like a, a rate of return in on investment. So equals to RRI. And you see uh, the long form says returns an equivalent interest rate for the growth of an investment. Yeah. And when I start with an RRI, you see, first it is asking me for n period. In my case, my n periods are, uh, yeah, the actual, like, uh, I'll be ignoring the starting uh, time zero. So the, my n periods are one, two, three, four. So I'll be saying four. That's my n, P, E, R. Then uh, I say comma. Then it is asking me a present value. So P, V is my present value. F is my future value. So present value is my starting value at time zero. So in that case, it's 10,000. I'm going to say comma. Then it is asking me what is my FV, which is future value, meaning what is the last value at the end of this 10th, uh, sorry, n per n period. So it's uh, 15,642.64. Then I'm going to close the bracket. I'm going to say this. <laughs> yeah, I got exactly same answer. I'm going to convert it into, uh, yeah, I'm going to add some uh, decimals to it. And uh, yeah, let's match the form. Yeah. 
So this is exactly the uh, same what I got. GR. Yeah. So you see, uh, like modern Excel is so uh, simplified. It, there is a standard function RRI to get the CAGR. So maybe I must add some notes out here. Let's do that. Uh, so how I calculated this? Yeah. Maybe I will put. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I'll just say. Well, if I use equal interest initiator formula, and I won't want that. So for that reason, let me do this. I'm sorry. We'll go more number options. I will see text. Yeah, let me select this text and now I'll write the formula. So this is what I did to calculate this part at 1.18 is equals to my future value future value divided by which is uh, in this case it is uh, 15642 divided by my present value yeah bracket closed then raised to 1 divided by n p e r i o d yeah so the end period is only the active periods yeah so i will be ignoring time 0 and the 4 so that's what uh, the formula i used and i got this and then I did minus one. Yeah, in fact, uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, yeah, to avoid future confusion for you, let me do this. And I will do uh, this up towards the end of this. Minus one. So let me do that right away here itself. So bracket minus one. I start this with a bracket. Bracket and I will do this. Starts. Oh, doesn't look like it likes my yeah. But other type of bracket. So I'll remove that and use the standard brackets. Enter. Perfect. Yeah. So in that case, I shouldn't be doing this because it's already accounted for. So this is my answer. That's my CAGR, and it's exactly how I got it. So yeah, this is this number. Perfect. Yeah. So this is how I got this value and this value. Uh, for this also let me go over here and again these are some texts you are also learning that you know i'm converting this into text so that it doesn't start a formula then i'm going to say equals to r r oh no i converted into a text but still is taking r let's see what's going on yeah maybe let me go over here and let me use technically it shouldn't so let's see r r i I still continue and say this, then end E E R I O D, comma by default it's telling your yeah, present value, comma future future value. Yeah, so this is the exact syntax I used. Although I used text, I don't know why it's converting back into the formula let's say select all control c and i will do say control x let's just not deal with that i will add a text box over here so insert text box uh they do this and paste the formula okay awesome so this should give you a reference about uh yeah this is the formula used to got the get this i'll use the text box here i said i think text box works well so insert So awesome. Yeah, so these are the two uh, ways, two different uh, syntaxes I used to calculate the CAGR. Now we are going to do the exact same type of analysis for uh, this progressive insurance thing. Now we are going to use this sheet for our assignment. So in this assignment, we are going to analyze uh, this data for a group of uh, 10 uh, I will say top 10 uh, insurance companies and their market respective market share in year 2018. And I got this data from the link over here data. So it says market share for auto insurance and uh, it's giving me for the top 10. I mean, yeah, that's what I've selected. And I can see the market share by the top 10 
insurance companies for the year 2018 combinedly cumulatively it was 72 percent and yeah this is the data uh, which has been fed in over here uh, here you can see the least is starting from 2000 so yeah like the same data is over here 2000 and increasing until 2080 so this is yeah all the data that we have so for example you see this is 17.9 17.90 uh, this is uh, 18.7 so for 20 uh yeah 10 18.10 10, uh 68 uh so yeah i mean i have converted into a single decimal uh if you guys want uh you can still make it uh bigger so that yeah you have double decimal but i will keep it as is for now so let's have a single decimal here so yeah here is the data from 2000 um uh then uh until 2018 and you can see some of the uh, i have hidden some of the cells over here columns yeah let's let's use the data that we have picked here and uh, in this analysis, uh, what you are going to see is, uh, you see this is 2018. So this is uh, like a table you are seeing name of the uh, insurance group and their market share in 2018. This is the last one. And uh, this is going for like 18 years ago. Uh, what was uh, in those days, what was the current state or what was the situation? And currently, what is the situation? Just to quickly look at, you know, just a visual glance is for State Farm. From 2000, it was almost 18%. 2018, it is almost 17%. So almost flat. Uh, on an average, you see it rose a little, 18.7, 18.7, 18.3, 18.3, 18.1, and yeah, almost flat, maybe 1% decline. Oh, but uh, if it's over like 18 years, I, I'm, I'm not worried about it. Next one, let's see Geico. So in 2000, it was um, 4.7, and as time went, uh, yeah, they are like systematically increasing, and they are at 13%. So almost like uh, 8 or 9% increase, so almost from 5% to 14, uh, almost 9% increase. Uh, next one. And progressive uh, 2010 uh, sorry 2000 it was 4.7 and then uh, steady increase all the way to 11 so again like from 5 percent to 11 percent yeah pretty much on the uptrend uh, let's see the next one uh, all state almost 12 percent uh, steady decline until it is 9.1 so almost from 12 percent to like yeah 9 9 percent so yeah 2.8 percentage uh, decline next one usaa 3.4 percent in 2000 and currently at or maybe at uh, in 2018 it is 6% so steady increase not significant but yeah like yeah maybe within the percentage from 3.4 to 5 is like almost 160 170% increase uh, the next one are like yeah like a uh, small small digits in those days 2000 and currently also they are in the same range so uh, they are going steadily maybe whatever strategy they are picked whatever uh, yeah like customer deals coupons or yeah the way they are uh, using their marketing strategies or the type of service they are giving they are yeah they are more or less they are steady versus uh, i'll say uh, in this case uh, two main groups that stand outs are uh, gaico and progressive you can see 4.7 in uh, 2000 and like yeah significant double digit increase to uh, yeah like almost 13.5 and 11 percent so yeah this is quick glance at the data but again we can uh, extract a lot of uh, data a lot of insights from these using uh, several uh, visualization tools uh, as well as excel processing uh, yeah the data processing tools over here so the very first is yeah i have just listed this uh, 2018 so this is the current state maybe that was the data that was uh, available when we uh, started this assignment <coughs> and yeah these are the uh, current market share top 10 companies uh, accounting for 72 percent of the market share and i'm sure there were many but again those all uh yeah contribute to for the uh, remaining i would say or approximately 28 percent so let's focus on the top 10 only uh here uh, we are going to use the conditional formatting so for that purpose yeah here is a tool uh well in, in our previous assignment also we have used as uh, conditional formatting so yeah it's more or less similar in this case we are strictly going with the data bars and we are going to use this solid uh sorry uh, data bar and yeah, let's focus on solid data work. But again, we are going to uh, do some things before we move forward with it. So again, uh, this is a market share. I want to keep this uh, column as is so that I can see the number. On top of it, I've created a separate column called as data bar. So for that, I'm going to use the exactly same number. And again, why I'm, I'm not copy pasting or doing anything, I'm going to use this formula equals to this and enter. So I'm going to drag this formula all the way down. And again, I could have easily copied, uh, pasted it over or paste values to get the values. But again, uh, by using this formula equal to this value, later on, if uh, these number changes, uh, my data bar is also going to automatically update. Yeah. So that's the advantage I'm getting using Excel. So that's what the reason I'm doing. Yeah. So once I did that, I'm going to select all of these from uh, like 1 to 10, that is uh, State Farm all the way to American Family. 
Then I'm going to go here, conditional formatting. In my home tab, conditional formatting. Go to the data bars, select this solid fill. But uh, one more thing I'm going to do. Yeah, as you see when I uh, pick the solid fill, I'm getting those data bars. Uh, it's nothing but those bar charts, uh, which are proportional to the values you are seeing over here. Uh, but uh, I can see uh, along with bar charts, I can see the numbers also superimposed on them. So if I don't want those numbers, I will go over here. Again, conditional formatting, same data bar. Uh, instead of like solid, bed, uh, solid fill, I'm going to go and uh, go below and see more rules. And in these more rules, I'm going to select over here, say show bar only. Once I do that, you see, uh, I'm only seeing the bars. Yeah, I'll make it a little bigger. I'm only seeing the bar bars over here. And the way uh, this feature, uh, that is conditional formatting data bar, is uh, I'll say uh, constructed or designed is that it will take the highest value among these range that has been selected and it will set it as a 100% level and all the subsequent numbers will be uh, proportional uh, to the yeah to this 100% level yeah so in this case it's 17 more 5 is 100% you see it's all filled all the way and then proportionally it is uh, yeah the bars are decreasing just for example if I change this to say 70% you see what happens. So this is the highest. So it will, uh, yeah, the data bar feature will set this at 100% and then everything will be uh, proportionally uh, adjusted. Uh, yeah, the height of uh, the remaining uh, bars will be proportionally adjusted. Yeah. So I'll do control C here so that I go back to my original numbers. So that's how we completed our data bar. Next uh, thing is you can see, uh, like, yeah, I will repeat. Uh, I have from this data link, I have arranged this data from 2018. Although uh, I have skipped some, you know, some, uh, I will say nine years between in between these or yeah, nine years between these, some years between these and so on, because we are focusing on these, uh, the key numbers only. And uh, yeah, uh, let's let's uh, draw the spark line. Uh, so spark line feature. And for that, what you have to do is go to insert and you see this line over here. So that's what you are supposed to uh, select yeah so i'm selecting this spark line uh, for the one cell n phi uh, yeah for the very first and then i'm going uh, to my insert tab within that line sub tab i'm clicking on it it says line spark uh, yeah it's, it's create spark line it is asking me for the data range so i'm going to uh, select i yeah, click on this small box over here that has uh, underline arrow and uh, uh, yeah arrow facing up click on that now here i'm supposed to make the selection so i'm selecting at the top uh, all these cells from 2000 until 2018 and I'm going to click uh, on this again and then it is telling uh, what is the location of the uh, spark line I want it to be n5 which is this and I've locked it down I mean by default to lock it down so I'm going to say okay you see it created a spark line uh, there then I'm going to drag uh, this same spark line uh, syntax format all the way down now you can see spark lines for the remaining uh, 10 uh, companies insurance groups uh, are showing up and again like uh, there by default it is taking some uh, yeah default color so blue in this case for each of the spark line if i want to change that you see i will select this and maybe go over here i can uh, pick whatever i like maybe i want a red this time so yeah this is how you change the line uh, yeah the color of the spark line uh, one more thing you can see is uh, yeah let, let's read the trends over here so very first again this is a high level uh, information uh, we'll be able to just check the trends from start to end so here it's telling me that state farm more or less you know it started uh yes yeah, so at this point that increase and then more of a state a state flat significant drop and then again uh, maybe more or less uh, low but yeah within the same range so again here also you can re reiterate to confirm so 18 percent 17 percent uh, if you look at the second one, Geico, wow, steady increase, great news. Third one, progressive, yeah, another steady increase, great news. Uh, next one, all state, oh, wow, I'll say this is a significant drop. So from 12% to 9%, that's what we are seeing over here. Uh, I think even this has performed very well, USAA. So again, it's on uptrend. Uh, this also uh, initially, that is Liberty Mutual, increased uh, initially and then stayed flat. The next one, farmers, uh, significant, well, flat, down, flat, down. Uh, then nationwide, oh, it's a steady decline. Uh, then travelers, uh, I'll say slight increase, steady, uh, like significant drop, and then steady increase, and uh, more or less flat. Last one, American family, sudden drop, flat. So the, yeah, looking at these, you can quickly uh, get a feel of, uh, about how these uh, companies are performing over a pe uh, given period of time. Uh, second thing is, you can see uh, these spark lines. Yeah, again, <clears throat> they are not uh, around the same range. 
yeah, yeah, just like uh, what we saw over here. Uh, one more thing is, if I have to delete this path line, you can, uh, you see, I'm trying. To, what I'm trying to do is, I have selected one of these random ones, and if I hit delete on my keyboard, you see, it won't delete because it's it's a feature that has been embedded. In order for you to do that, what you do is uh, right click on one of this. I mean, the the spark line that you want to delete. Right click over here, go over here, uh, spark line option, and say. Uh, Clear selected spark line. So if I click that, you see what happens. It will clear that, uh, and other spark lines uh, will be still be there. And again, they will be still in a group mode. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control Z, so it will bring that original uh, one step back. Other uh, thing, if you want to do is if you want to delete all of these, is you know right click here, one of them, uh, go to the spark line and say Clear selected spark line group. So if I do that, you see everything is gone. I'm going to hit Control Z again, bring it back. Other way to do it is again go to home tab. Yeah, select one of these uh, so that the whole group is selected. Uh, go to home tab and you see this clear option. Say uh, yeah, clear all. You see this uh, yeah this uh, one of this part line goes away. Yeah, so that's another way to do it. Other part is yeah, like I said, you know these are like. Uh, all these park lines doesn't matter what their actual range within you know uh, within these is what the minimum and maximum here is. Uh, it has a fixed you know all these lines have a fixed start point, fixed end point. So again, these are not proportional to the range, uh, yeah, subsequent range of each of these stock. So <clears throat> how to change that is you see you select uh, one of this park line, then you know, a tab like this will occur. Occur, and you see I will show. I'm clicking somewhere outside. You see that tab doesn't exist. One as soon as I click on that, that spark line tab, tab appears. So within a uh, click on that tab, and within this go to this axis option, and uh, yeah make this bigger. And you see it says vertical automatic for each spark line. That's what it is doing. If I want, I can keep it as a same uh, for uh, all spark lines, or I can use a custom value and so on. And based on that, it will make whatever uh, you know selections you have made and it will make the changes here. Yeah? But again, this was just to give you an overview about, about what Sparkline is and what are the common options that you sh should be using for a Sparkline to calculate the CAGR five year uh, manually and also using the RRI formula, which we just learned a few minutes ago in our previous sheet. And finally, we'll be doing a win or loss, a similar bar, uh, yeah, data bars. Uh, and yeah, we'll be checking uh, how, <clears throat> which one of them performed well and which one of them declined. Yeah. So to start with, same formula I'm going to use. I just uh, like added this note over here. That is equals to future value divided by present value raised to one upon n period. So when I, I will repeat, uh, we are uh, doing these numbers from 2014 until 2018 only. Yeah. For some reason, I'm just ignoring the past ones. So yeah, this should be my uh, zeroth year. That is my starting point reference. Uh, so this is my year zero, uh, end of year one end of year two, end of year three, and end of year four. So by that way, my uh, N period, yeah, you see this term N period is four because yeah, one, two, three, and four. This is my starting value, year zero. So let's do the formula. So equals to, I'm going to start it with a uh, bracket, say equals to a future value, meaning my current one, latest one. So this is my future value divided by my present value, meaning my uh, baseline. So this, uh, then I'm going to say raise to, Start a, a parenthesis bracket and say one divided by n period. So uh, we agreed that yeah, like four. I'm going to say enter, and yeah, this is my uh, CHR. Oops, there is one more. I, uh, yeah, I'm supposed to do minus one. So I'll go over here and I'm going to do minus one over here. So this is my CHR I got. It's negative. Then I'm going to drag this formula all the way down. These are the numbers I got. Next, I'm going to uh, do the same thing, but using RRI formula. And here is the comment, uh, yeah, the syntax of RRI. So equals to RRI bracket or parentheses n period comma present value comma future value. So let's do that. Yeah, equals to RRI start a parentheses. It is asking for n period. So four is our n period comma my it is asking my present value, meaning uh, what was my oldest value. So this is the present value comma future value FE. It is asking my FE. So this is my latest one. This one to close the bracket. I'm going to say enter. Yeah, I got the exactly same number. So this is kind of a verification. So yeah, I tag the formula and I can see all the numbers are the same. Next, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, yeah, let's keep it as this. Next, do a win loss, which is uh, data bars here as well. So I'm going to click on here. Conditional formatting data bars. And let's try this one. Oops, sorry. 
dread oh i know yeah so what i'm supposed to do is equals to this value enter okay, control y yeah say equals to this value over here i'm going to say this and then i'm going to drag the whole thing down and now uh, let's i'm going to select this one with conditional formatting data bars let's see this one oops i don't want that a solid bar perfect so it's doing a complete solid and i don't want that let's see this color shades no this one no no new rule no well yeah this is the right data but this is green and field i don't want that i don't want yeah in fact yeah let's uh, stick with this and then i'm going to drag all the way down let's see awesome uh here just like what we saw before i am seeing here those numbers as well which i don't want so i'm going to go back here uh data bars i'm going to say more rules i'm going to select show bar only once i do that i'm going to drag the formula all the way down and see what i got awesome so this gives us a clear understanding about uh, there were some uh, companies that had negative and uh, there are some companies which are positive so uh, just looking at this i'll say the company that lost the most market share is this one which is nationwide yeah that's 8.29 uh, cagr in 5 years the next one that was lost the most was farmers negative uh, 4.34 the next one was this one was state farm which is negative 2.28 and uh, the companies that uh, on the uh, biggest were these two which is geico 5.67 progressive 5.99 and i'll say uh, even us is uh, aa which is 3.27 and the next one was uh, oh sorry the third one was travelers 3.57 and then uh, usa was 3.27 so just looking at these you can get a clear overview about their uh, cagr performance in five years yeah so you see uh, initially we got you know some similar data like this from this link which uh, well just glancing through even if i try to read the numbers i am not going to get a lot of good insight so first thing is we arranged like this and got data bar so this is telling uh, the highest market share in 2018 was earned by this company then uh, geico and so on uh, but again this doesn't give a full picture then i got uh, like few years of data for this park line so based on these park lines i got a trend about yeah couple company increasing and yeah and so on then using this uh, cagr and win loss or yeah same like condition formatting i'm getting you even bigger picture so more insights uh, is something that we got next after doing these uh, calculations for cagr using manually the formula and rri and coming up with the win loss let's do some verification validation and just check uh, if all the analysis we did does it uh, matches to the manual calculation and for that uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this entire 2014 or our baseline uh, numbers baseline year numbers control c i'm, I'm just going to do control v yeah, everything is copied correctly uh, next uh, since i got this rri for uh, yeah say for each of this year uh, these are the numbers i got so let me start with the randomly say i will pick this one or maybe this one for uh, gaiko so we'll start over here for echo and let's do the calculation out here so for that uh, what the calculation i'm going to do is this uh, this equals to uh, this value previous 2014 or uh, the immediate previous uh, year's value uh, multiplied by start a bracket i'm going to say 1 plus my rri i can use either of these so yeah i will just pick Uh, if you want you can pick the other one as well there is p uh, you should get the same answer and i'm going to press enter and when i check this number this should be exactly uh, for 2015 yeah so when i go over here yeah it's yeah like uh, yeah so if i use the single decimal over here yeah i'm getting around for 0.4 so which validates that yeah i've used and one more thing is uh, i always want to use the same number uh, yeah this 5.67 So again, if I drag this uh, left way, uh, it's it's going to drag all those. Uh, yeah, the Q six will become R six and so on, which I don't want. So I need to use absolute coordinate. And what I'll do is I'm just using that absolute coordinate for my Q. And the reason for that is if I drag this left word, I want this uh, yeah like uh, the cell to be locked at Q. And if I drag this down, I want the cell to be uh, 
is like a locked at Q only, but I want the number to change from six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and so on for the respective uh, downward uh, rows. So that's why I'm just locking uh, the the Q version of it. So I'm going to say enter, and now uh, let's see what I yeah what, what I get. So I'm going to drag this formula all the way to my right until 2018, and when I check this number, uh, this is 12. Yeah, this is 11.9. Yeah, well, just for making things easier, add one more. So this is my 11.3 now. Oops, yeah. Let's uh, control Z. Let's do this. Yeah, single one. So this is my 2015, uh, 2015, 11.4. Uh, 2016 is, oops, maybe. So do this, 2016, the same one. 2017 is my, yeah, uh, same one, V6 multiplied by. Yeah, that's correct. And so on, yeah. So yeah, more or less, I'm, I'm getting the same range. So that validates that uh, well, the answers that I'm getting are correct. I use double digits. Oh, sorry, here, and I'll do the same. Since I uh, did all these, I'm going to do this over here and here. Drag all the way down. So you see, more or less, I'm getting the same uh, numbers. So 11.39. Yeah, let's do this double digit. 10.78, uh, this, uh, yeah, 10.8, 11.43, 9.39, I'll not see him. Yeah, there's some decimal, decimal errors will be there. Then uh, 11.92, uh, 12.04, 12.72, 12.83, 13.44, and so on. So just remember, some level of errors will be there. Uh, but yeah, when I visually check, uh, yeah, 1.9, 1.9, uh, 1.89, 1.8, yeah, so on. I'll do the same thing uh, here also. Other way of, uh, you know, extracting, like, transferring the formula is control C, and control V, so paste, I should be getting the same range. 18.3, yeah, 18.2, 7, 18. Point, yeah, six, uh, and so on. And let's get a difference between equals to uh, difference, 2018 difference, manual versus actual. So this is my manual uh, minus my actual. So this is my actual, I'm going to do this for 2018 only. So you see more or less I'm getting a zero difference. If I drag this down, yeah, I think most of them are like, uh, yeah, it's zero. So that validates that, uh, yeah, whatever calculations I did, either using CHF fire manually, well, numbers I'm getting the same with RRI are uh, like, yeah, uh, very correct because I'm able to replicate that. And the difference for 2018 uh, with, in reference to my 2014 is uh, the same. Yeah, so that's the thing. Then let's go ahead and select all of these and highlight it using some kind of uh, different color, say gray color. So I know yeah, when I'm graying, uh, I will know, yeah, this is highlighted. So I know it's uh, yeah all correct. It's uh, near zero. A uh, few mistakes that can happen is if this difference is not zero, uh, just check, uh, you know, your formula. If this dollar sign is there, uh, yeah, dollar uh, Q is always there. That's one thing. Because if you don't do that and if you drag it, uh, yeah, the, the starting RRI will be will change for the remaining numbers. I will show you an example over here. So you see, I'm uh, deleting this and then I'm taking this formula. You see, uh, these all change because uh, you see that Q number is changing, is shifting, and that's not uh, consistent at all. Yeah, so I'm doing control Z, 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 and back to that same Q dollar. That's one mistake. Other thing is, uh, I recommend you to copy paste these numbers over here instead of manually typing because you see here it looks 18.7. But if I go, go to more granular level, you can see, uh, yeah, it's yeah, in this case it's, it's 18.7, so that's not a problem. Let me use uh, another number. Say, uh, let's use standard two. Let me use this number. See, here as well, it's the same. Well, unfortunately, I mean, I don't think it's uh, any different here. Yeah, but again, these numbers can be like 18.7561234. And here, if you type in like 18.7, again, that will create a small discrepancy and it will you will see some number over here. So that's another thing that can happen. So just watch out for those kind of uh, things. Yeah, so better to just copy paste over here, a uh, problem solved and make sure all these, yeah, uh, yeah, specifically look for this dollars uh, yeah, sign in front of Q only. Uh, lastly, what I am going to ask you to do or request you guys to do is complete the CAGR. So find the CAGR for these uh, two companies, Adidas and Google. So uh, the revenues for these two companies, Adidas and Google are shown over here from 2011 and 2015. So I want you to treat this as your baseline. 
So yeah, let's see a starting point. Well, yeah, let's use uh, see this color we have used, or maybe yeah, this color we have used, uh, standard one. So this is your base starting point, and then this is your baseline. This is your year one, two, three, and four. So using this four year, that is n period is four. Use CAGR. Uh, like find out the CAGR for Adidas and Google. And I don't care which formula you use. Either use the manual one or uh, RRI. Either one will should work fine. Just uh, yeah, get the CAGRs. And uh, in the quiz, the quiz, this question has been asked. Yeah. So go ahead and solve that. Uh, thank you so much for all your time and attention, guys. You guys are doing great for the entire class. Uh, yeah, keep up your great, excellent performance. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye bye.